looks like we have a dog stuck in the tent. Hey, don't worry. What are you doing here, doggies? Don't go in that tent. It's not allowed. Okay? Not allowed. Mm. Put two new members on the team. They just don't want to leave the tent. I'll get them out. Right, we're going to need to close the tent now because we haven't finished sleeping yet. Okay. We are going to get back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the tent, man. Not in the tent. Outside, please. Outside, please. Oh, no, they don't want to come in. Oh, no, he's poisoning him. Let's go. Oh, no shoes. Mind the mattresses. <laughs> How's it going, little friend? Are you tired today? Yeah, it's quite a life. Oh, yeah, that was nice and comfortable on the carpet here, isn't it? Okay, Sunday the 20th of May, here from still on car park camping. Now we're about to leave shortly. We have a new friend here, he's just fallen completely asleep. But uh, I've just been talking to the guy in the restaurant over there. Um, the owner of the restaurant, he was telling us a little bit about the places we can go and visit today. Goose alert we're going to go to, I think. Uh, get back on the bike shortly, telling us some good places to go on the way to Cappadocia. Uh, so the owner of the restaurant, he told me, there's not, not as many guests as usual here because uh, this is the time of fasting, the 30 days of Ramadan. So it, uh, yeah, he was telling us a little bit about that and, and why they actually fast. And, uh, he was telling us not because uh, they do it because God tells them to. He said it's actually quite good for your body. It gives all your internal organs a, a rest and uh, makes you feel much better afterwards. So that was a bit interesting to listen to his reason for, for why they do it. But, uh, it's also true that all the in the olden days, all the religions, they all used to, to fast. It's uh, not only Muslims that do it, but some religions, uh, especially in the West, we seem to have forgotten fasting, we just do the celebrating. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was uh, interesting to talk to him, nice guy. So now we I just have to fix Jamie's puncture. Jamie also had a puncture the yep. same day I had a puncture. It's a bit strange after nearly 3,000 kilometers, we have no problems at all, and then we have two punctures in the same day. Yeah, and uh, now I want to make a little, a little story. Once upon a time there was a hot air balloon that was <laughs> coming over to Daddy. And this is was a little gift from the restaurant. So the lady from the restaurant have given me a hot air balloon. <laughs> and uh, actually on that day, Cappadocia. It's here, Cappadocia. Yeah. So yes. Mm. Okay, I'm just leaving Alara here. The dog that's been uh, staying next to our tent is now following us. I'm not sure how long he's going to follow us down the road. <laughs> we'll have to see. Looks like we have a new member of the team. Okay, doggy, I think you need to go home now, yeah? Yeah, can't come with us all the way. Okay, doggy, we have to go, okay? Go home. We just stopped to buy some water and bread. Guess who turned up? Our friend from the campsite. <laughs> oh dear. Lara town just come through of the village. I guess he was following us still. Hope he knows the way home. The dog's still following us. I probably just need a big downhill to lose him, but it's all uphill. So now we're trying our best to outrun this dog. It keeps following us. Now we're four kilometers out of Ilara. Problem is it's uphill nearly all the way to Guzzlewood. We've just got no downhill to outrun him. I was hoping soon he'll give up and go back. I don't even know if he belongs to the restaurant or whether he's just a stray dog. 
hanging around there, but hopefully he knows the area so he can find his way back. <laughs> Heading up to the town of Guzzalos, yeah, up here. Some uh, Christian churches dotted around here. Go and look at those. Okay, just entering the town of Guzzalos, or climbing up to the town of Guzzalos. 1,500 metres up in the mountains here, so go on, help, really. Okay, this is the main square here in Guzzalus. Usually a place that's full of men drinking tea. But uh, you may be able to hear in the background it's under thunder. So uh, there's not many here left at the moment. So we just been recommended to go to uh, Monastery Valley, just uh, a few hundred meters from here. There's a road that takes us into a valley. Should be able to camp there, so we'll stay there. So. We haven't gone too far today, we've only done uh, 15 kilometers from Ilara village. So, um, there you can see, waterproofs are on, it's starting to thunder a little bit. But uh, uh, We managed to lose the dog somewhere about four kilometers out the town. We had a place where we could get a little bit of speed on and managed to leave him behind, so hopefully he's gone back home now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is good Lord. We'll uh Peter and Jamie are just down there somewhere trying to find some food and we'll try and find a place to put the tent up and uh, hopefully enjoy the scenery. Let's uh, see what happens. Okay. Now it's time for a bit of thunder and lightning. <laughs> Sorry? Okay. Hold on, I think we're getting uh, free tea again. <laughs> Okay, not too much sightseeing today. Should have been going to the Monastery Valley now, but you can hear. It's raining and thunder. So, time for tea. Now we're just starting down the road it's called Monastery Valley. Stop raining, sun's come out. You can see there's a bit of a river flowing down the road here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go and see an underground city. This is one of the places we told you about yesterday. It's uh, just on the side of the road here, Monastery Valley. Don't have to pay to get in, so let's go and have a look. We came up to the square in this town, Gusellgjord, or whatever it's called. I followed the sign for Monastery Valley and then we came down here, down a steep hill. Well, not too far from the city, but down a steep hill. So then somebody else knows where to go now, because we didn't. No, we didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and there are locked there now. You can see how they maybe keep, uh, maybe we have, maybe they have also a police or something. You can see here they have a, a little hole, so maybe they can lock down. And they used to what, live here for six months at a time? I bet there's somewhere they could be here six months at a time on the ground. Wow. Yeah, the thunderstorm and rain of a few minutes ago is gone. We can explore this underground city here. This is the second underground city here in the valley here. Which is down below, you can see St George's Church. Let's go and have a look at that. This is St George's Church. Oh, no, never mosque. But, uh, this, uh, this town here, Kusulot, used to be uh, Greek. 
until 1923 when they had a population exchange. So all the Greeks left and the Turks moved in. So, more caves. The great thing about this place is compared to the Ilara Valley we were yesterday. Um, there's no other people here. We've got the whole place to ourselves to explore, basically. We're looking for a place to camp. So we can find something down here. Hopefully the view is pretty nice if we can. Pretty spectacular area. Great place here if we can find a place here somewhere. Be really nice. Some mountain sun in the background again. Been in the backdrop for a few days now. Car park to great. Amazing scenery camping. It's a pretty good location today. Near the lake and the church up there. Good place, Jeremy. 